Hi there, welcome to another video. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. Today we're going to take these eight colors and we are going to do something very, very different. Um, this pattern, okay, so I'm going to create a little spot over here. Um, this pattern, you might recognize it, it's going around. I saw it on the internet and it was inspired, but I kind of didn't like the way it would start so I made my own kind of changes you know that's uh, an artistic license there so um, change it up a bit it'll make it easier to start this um, basically all I'm going to use is just two pieces of each of these colors each of these is uh, one third of a skein and yeah I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible for you guys so um Let's do this. Show you kind of how I'm going to be able to put this all together real quick. I was going to actually pause and go off and do all this, but I realized I can show you why I put it onto spools and why this is my preferred method. So basically just unhooking each one, lining it all up right here. Got some neons, got some regular colors. Kind of making up the whole little rainbow thing here. Mind you, the pattern does actually kind of go just as I intend on making it. Um, but that wasn't necessary. In fact, if you want to do this in a grayscale, that would be totally cool. Um, and normally I don't feel like I would have to be so compelled to say that, but there's some people out there that are really concerning me. Like, um, one person was asking for examples of, I don't know how many colors they wanted for their, their thing, but they, uh, were asking for examples of stuff in that, in those colors. And I was thinking, you know, if you know how many colors you want to do, just look at all patterns with that number of colors. Heck, you can go to my portfolio and sort by the number of colors. And then anything that has, let's say if you want something with eight colors like this is, right? You can take and say, all right, I want something like that. And then switch up whatever color to whichever spot you want it to be at. I mean, it doesn't, I don't get it. All right, so I already have all my colors together. That was the, that easy. I am going to use a clip for a moment. Clip this. And I'm going to take, I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible so you guys can see what I'm doing, right? So just over like that, right? I'm going to pull this in here. And get that to tighten down. Look at that. Now we have a nice little slip knot. Now, I'm going to take my easel, set that right here. Now, that was the halfway point, right? Take my easel, whoops. It was locked down, that's why I didn't want to move. Bring this up. I'm going to take that little halfway thing. I don't know, put my clip right there. And that is going to keep that from moving. And now I can start basically in the middle and I will be able to go for essentially what is um, a sixth of the strings, which is like 1.3 meters in one direction. I'll be able to go 1.6 uh, meters in the other direction. Now all I have to do is sort out the colors evenly to each side. So we have, I can kind of go down the middle with this thing, right? All right. 
I suppose they could have made this a little bit easier myself if I did that whole little drop the skeins two bits at a time. With, you know, half the colors to one side and half the colors to the other. That would have made this part just a skosh easier, but not necessary. Doesn't really matter that much. Because as you can see, already there. Oops, a little tangled. Okay, now we're there. All right. So, this project starts on the dark orange. I should probably pull that picture up. You guys have it because that's going to be there as a result of my editing later on. But it might be handy for me to have it right now. Only on account of because I can make sure I'm doing this right. Where did I put that picture? There we go. Bear with me a moment while I make this bigger. All right. There's no need to try to clean up the strings like I'm doing a bracelet. Because um, once I finish doing this direction, I am going to undo this other side and then go that way. So the normal getting all the nice clean start and stuff, not applicable here. So it's the orange to the orange, orange to the red, orange to the dark purple. Yeah, somebody actually went and asked a friend of mine who has an online shop if they had a pattern available for their candy stripe bracelet and it's moments like that that I suddenly realize that if you've only ever used those internet sites to come up with your patterns and you haven't actually played with it and you haven't actually experimented with changing things around then you're probably missing out on a lot of stuff and I'm not going to say it's wrong I, I it's I'm not so I don't even know the word for that um, arrogant is to think that my way is the only way um, but I gotta think man that there's there's got to be a better way that if you don't know that you can change up the colors of a pattern or that you can even change the pattern, you know, like this one. This one, the the whole diamond thing is uh, completely different. And I was thinking, why, why would you want to make your life hard on yourself? You could start this off really nice and easy with one great big diamond and go from there. It'll look really cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. So, all right, and this way, see, I take it all the way off to the edge. Now you just do the same with the colors going the other way. So this is going to be for my wife. Um, I guess I was going to try to hold off and not mention what this was until later on in the video, but I guess that probably the thumbnail and stuff will probably give it away. So it doesn't matter. It's a hairband and in order to be a hairband, it has to be quite long to go around and be the hairband, right? So, um, that's why we're starting in the middle. It's be like kind of making a really long bracelet. Now, mind you, if you wanted to do a choker, you could kind of start that in the same kind of mannerism. It's, this is just an easy way of not having to add the string. That said, if you're making a hairband, you can totally add the string because you're going to be attaching this 
to something else. And so if you were going to have any strings added on because, like, say, something ran out, that's not going to be a problem. Um, you would be able... But, okay, it won't be a problem provided you can add the strings towards the middle, right? So you might not want to have one of those patterns where you're constantly using something that's uh, running along on the outside. Because what will happen there is if you have to replace that string because it's getting used more than everything else, um, it's going to be a lot harder to hide that. So, um, I have a rough idea of how wide this thing will be, but um, the reason I didn't show the hairband in advance is I don't actually have it. Um, what I'll have to do here. So we're still under the whole quarantine thing and it's kind of dodgy going out to the malls and you gotta scan into with your phone or your ID to get into anywhere. So um, I'm not getting out that much. At least trying not to. Don't want to get anybody sick here. So um, I don't actually have the hairband as of yet. I'll, I'll go get it. And uh, but I'm going to get it after I have this thing relatively put together. That way I can make sure that I get the right size. Because this isn't going to be... Whoops, I think I got that in the wrong sequence there. The light purple is supposed to come before the blue. It kind of rolled backwards. I'll fix that when I come from the other side that up a little bit but for now I do have to have these in the right sequence so anyways I will pick it up when I can make sure that I get the right size for it my estimate is I need the band itself to be approximately one and a half cm which I'm not sure that's maybe three quarters of an inch so I don't know if that's really big when it comes to hair bands I <laughs> If you've seen my photos, you know I have no hair, so no need for such things. Besides, I grew up in that era where guys didn't have hair bands like that, so I know a lot of guys are doing that stuff now. I just died. I don't understand its difference. New generation, I'm old. Not a boomer, though. Those guys are the generation before me. I'm one of those hippie offsprings. So, all right, this is starting to shape up, it's not the greatest, but it'll get there. Each row starts to help pull it together and become a thing. And then I will guide it and shape it and get it going. And, uh, yeah. I can expect, because it's not doubled up, which would have made it much, much wider, um, that each knot is so much smaller, it takes longer to make something like this. So I can, I can expect this is going to take me a few days. So basically, I'm going to kind of get you started on what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and then I'm going to show you how I actually attach it to the band, because I think... I don't have so much to talk about that I could spend, even if it was sped up. I don't think I have that much to really tell you guys. Nothing nothing too exciting over here. Obviously, not getting out. Um, I mean, to us, like the big things are, you know, like mom had a doctor's appointment. That's not relevant to nodding. So, still waiting for um, some string that's supposed to come from the U.S. I'm really excited about that prospect because it's going to lead to a giveaway. Um, I'm not actually going to do the giveaway in this thing. I'm going to actually just be the guy producing the bag that they will give away. So, pretty stoked about that. 
And I kind of like the fact that it's not in my hands, so that way I can't be accused of passing it to a friend or something else. I think uh, letting letting the supplier choose the winner kind of makes it so that way I can kind of step away from the whole thing. Kind of cool. All right. I think, hopefully, you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. It is definitely shaping up. So yeah, if you take anything from this video, hopefully it's you can alter patterns, you can alter the colors, and you can make things besides just bracelets. I think that's the the key takeaways. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll come up with some other inspirational thoughts along the way that I can share with you. But I think those are the important things right now that I've been thinking about. Um, you could definitely do this with a much more elaborate pattern. Like, I could totally see some of the uh, the other really great designs I've been seeing on the internet. Again, I just, uh, you know, well, this one, this one's not exactly going to be balanced. I think the yellow gets used the least. And I think the dark orange gets used the most. Not 100% sure on that yet. Um, that's just an estimate based on when I did the the drawing for it. Oh, by the way, the drawing will be available on the website. There'll be a link in the description. Try to make that a little bit easier for you guys. And you can see it's really taking a shape. And I suppose as it being a hairband, you could color coordinate to outfits. You, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of gals that would really appreciate something like that. Or matching bracelet hairband thing. That would be a cool combination. I'm not sure I want to carry them in my shop. My only fear is I'm not sure how I would go about sending them in the mail because typically, if I'm to understand properly, those hairbands are plastic. And if you send it in the mail, I would think that there's a possibility that that could get snapped. And then I wouldn't, I mean, I, it, I guess the person could re-put it onto a different band, but that would be kind of terrible. I mean, that's, that's, you know, they have to send it back to me and stuff, and I'm paying postage both ways, and I'm not sure... If somebody has an idea on like how to make that kind of a thing, because um, I suspect as soon as you like go putting it into a box or something, like the shipping costs are just going to go way high. I'm not sure. I guess I could do it totally for locals. I mean, if there was people here in Singapore or or going to be traveling through Singapore, that could work. But I'm not. I don't see how putting these in my shop would work. But if you're like one of those people who do the the flea market booths or, I don't know, those kind of events where you're actually dealing with public life, yeah, I think this would be a definite cool thing for your repertoire. Or if for nothing else, let's say, like, okay, so for me, what I did way back in the day, right, um, I was hanging out with the hippies with the Grateful Dead. And in order for myself to kind of get noticed as not just a person who was buying bracelets really cheaply down in, you know, like Guatemala or, you know, wherever, um, I had a cuff, something that was about that big on my wrist. So, yeah, well, I'm sure you can see that, it's pretty zoomed in. It was huge, um, probably about eight inches across. Um, and it was, it was gloriously awesome. 
And of course, it was an eye catcher and people would immediately be drawn and be like, whoa, how or where did you get that? And of course, you know, hey, I made it. And, you know, that would lead to them talking to me and me selling bracelets. So if you're a gal and you're out at an event and you're likewise selling, having something like this in your hair, especially like these bright colors, would definitely get noticed. But anybody who likes the bracelets and stuff is going to spot that and be like, wow, that's really interesting. Where did you get that? And now you've opened up to a potential customer where you can be like, yep, I've got these as well. So at least that's, that's how it used to work in the day back when people talked to each other. I'm not sure that it's like that anymore because in Singapore, it definitely is not. People over here are way more timid unless they get to know you. And then, you know, that's a whole different story. All right, now I'm bringing down the orange. This is the last of the big diamondy part, and it starts to break up after this. And I think you can tell because I went all the way out to the to the very edge and then back in, um, including all of the colors. If you've seen this that other pattern, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. That how it's basically it just doesn't go all the way out to the edge. So, um, so it's optically it's going to have a similar look, not that big of a difference. But whatever. I think this one just makes it an easier start because you get to do all the strings on it first, just like this. And maybe it's just me. Maybe, you know, maybe somebody's going to argue, I like the other pattern better. It's, there's always those. But for me, this is, has been a relatively easy start. I can see there's a couple little spots over here that aren't great um, but I'm not exactly worrying about that because when I get to the other side I can actually undo this row sort that out better and go from there and it'll be perfect it's kind of the, the problem when you don't get that nice clean start but there is a workaround for that so all right at this point I can choose either side doesn't matter. I'm going to slide that up just a little bit so that way it's nice and secure. I always feel like if you start it off nice and smooth, the whole thing just works a whole lot better. All right. So this is one of those patterns that once it kind of gets to a point here, it's going to be do an area and yeah. It's not exactly my favorite thing to do, but I think it's kind of going to be worth it just because I think this is going to have a really cool look. So now at this point, um, I really don't need to actually look at the pattern and I'll tell you why. So that way you don't have to look at it either. The, there were eight colors in the whole thing, right? So that means when this purple comes down now, it is going to go across these four strings, creating four knots. Okay. Once it has made four, then it's time to do, do the thing coming the other direction. So that way it does four. Well, five, because it joins in the middle, I guess, but that's that fifth one is kind of like the whole thing I talk about when you're making a bag and you join things together. That's that extra row. So hopefully that actually kind of helps kind of make that a visual point for you. All right. 
So now this one comes down. Is it four or is it five? No, I guess it is four. So now, in order to continue on, what I really need to do is the stuff over on the right. So, I love how bright this is. Again, I am using some of the neon strings. And to give it contrast, the cold colors are not neon with the exception of the green. This one. Oh, and actually, the red is not a neon. So I have one of the hot colors is not a neon, and one of the cold colors is. So that's kind of a fun balance. Mind you, you don't need neons to do it. It's not the what this whole story is about. Actually, I know of somebody who would probably love this in a grayscale. I think that would look pretty cool as well. Although I really don't like the gradient of 8 in um, the grayscale for DMC colors. The problem is that a couple of them are just really way too close to each other. And as a result, it's really an eye strain to see which one is which. If the gradient was better, you know, like, like if you're playing in GIMP, right, you got the, the, the numbers for each of the colors and stuff. If you can spread the, the numbers out nice and evenly, you can get um, the, that shading effect kind of better. But the, the floss... Typically, I think the, the easiest grayscale with DMC colors is a 6. Just is what it is. All right. Time to bring this one down. So, yeah, it is 4. Huh. I guessed that it was going to be 5. All right. Now, at this point... What I like to do is, I uh, just was working on the right hand side, so I'm going to do the right hand side again, because I know that those strings weren't kind of just sitting around or whatever, right? So then I would naturally go to this one first. And now these have to alternate. So this one just came down, so now it's this one coming down. Again, if you understand how the pattern works, if you kind of look at how the layout was, you don't have to look at the pattern so much. This portion here is much like the bracelets I did in the No Pattern, No Problem, where there is a basic stripe coming down the, the center. This is just a different variation of that. Okay. And now we go to the other side. And why I kind of go back and forth, like I, once I've done this one, I'll do it again over on this side. Um, it's about trying to save just a, a bit of time. Not much. It's it's really only a fraction. But in a project that is as big as this one is, um, you'd be surprised how much more you accomplish if you go in with the mindset of saving a little time here, saving a little time there. You will find that projects get done so much quicker. So... As long as you're in that kind of framework of mind where you are, like, outwardly trying to uh, pick a path that will get you there sooner. Now, mind you, 
Normally I'm not just sitting around making bracelets talking. I would be normally listening to music and kind of dancing in my chair and getting this thing done. So that's why most of this project will be done without the camera rolling with the microphones because I can't afford to play my music for you guys because uh, copyrights and that kind of stuff. Be kind of cool if they didn't have all that kind of, those kind of rules or whatever. But I guess every artist wants to be paid. I just don't understand music as much. It just seems like make it one time you get paid for what is it now sixty years or something? It seems kind of crazy. Got a little tangle here. Uh, Yeah, the contrast here between the bright and the darker colors is great. I'm loving that. And I guess this is, okay, so you, <laughs> this is kind of letting you on a secret. People are like, how do you stay so motivated and how do you get so much done? Well, because I knew that these were going to be good colors. But despite knowing that they'd be good colors, I get myself excited seeing what it looks like uh, as I go up moving along. I mean, this is, I don't wait until I'm finished and then it, you know, say, oh, okay, I guess that's good. I'm admiring it at every step along the way and allowing myself to be excited about the process and anxious for seeing what it'll look like next. And as a result, it kind of pushes me to get things done faster. And, um, yeah, if, uh, if you can make that part of your process, I think you'll find that big, big projects like that I've been doing, you'll be like, heck yeah, because sure, I get a sense of enjoyment when I make a bracelet, but a bag is definitely many times greater and, uh, yeah, it's a bit addictive. <laughs> I was just joking with a friend um, last night saying that uh, I might have to actually see myself in a Nodders Anonymous if I actually had to uh, quit because it's a little obsessive. <laughs> but it's calming. It's peaceful. Like, like I said, like this, I don't even have to, to look at what I'm doing so much. I kind of kind of know what's coming. It's it's an easy process. And that's what I want to teach the most. Um, I know there's a lot of great bracelet makers who can look at a pattern and be like, okay, got it, you know, whatever. But I want to make it so that way there's some people out there who can do what I do which is to just to look at a pattern or look at a bracelet and be like, oh, I could do something like that. In fact, I think I would like to do it a little bit differently because that's, that's kind of a reward within itself. And if you want to share that, you know, your new creation or whatever, so the rest of the world can do it, that's, that's cool too. I get it. That's, that's not bad. But... I don't think that should be your, the first and foremost. I think there's a lot of um, patterns that, you know, just getting made for the sake of making, you know, because if those people that were putting the patterns into the computer were actually making it, I think they would change little tweaks like this, like having that big diamond in the, in the start. It's just a whole lot easier. Um, but they don't need that, 
you know, because they're just doing it on a computer. They're just doing it for the sake of an image or to be able to say they created number whatever. So, yeah, not me. I actually want to create because it's fun to make stuff. So this won't be my first hairband, by the way. Um, if you were to go into my Instagram, I think there's a picture way back with the second bag that I made where uh, I did a hairband out of some of the leftover string so that it matched the bag. So talking about like matching accessories, yeah, I, I did one for a really, really big handbag. <coughs> the one that my wife hated because it was too big. Oh well. Yeah, that even had a uh, a matching keychain, and the keychain was made in such a way that she could actually keep a uh, like a lip gloss inside of it. So imagine my disappointment when she didn't want to carry the bag around because it was too big, too heavy. Oh well. Bonus of. Being married to a, the guy that makes this stuff, just order up another one. Okay, so I'm going to slide this up. Um, it's, not, it's not as great for the video, but it will help keep everything in line because I can see this is trying to wander away from me a little bit. So... I at least want to get down to where we cross over and go the other direction. Which is actually coming up rather soon. So if you guys have any ideas for stuff that you're curious about making or want to see get made, leave a comment. Um, I was looking at my whiteboard and I've knocked off a bunch of my projects that uh, I had to do. So now I'm trying to figure out what else should I do. So if you got some ideas, thoughts, share them. Always open for trying new things. Oh, and soon I will have my new organizer for my strings. And that's gonna, that's got the potential leading to something. <laughs> Huge and obnoxious, so we'll see how that goes. I don't know. <laughs> I am so excited. I can't hardly stand it. It's going to change the way I handle starting out projects and designing them. and Yeah, pretty, pretty excited about the whole process. And I no, I don't want to say what that is for sure. Just thinking about that in my head there. That because I'm going to do an unboxing. And uh, it'll be a lot more fun. Oh man, I'm so excited. I'm like, this is going to be like a kid getting something for Christmas. Oh. 
or if you don't celebrate Christmas, whatever, whatever time you get that thing that you always wanted. So. So it's the dark purple is joining now. After that is the red. The red is the one that makes the X in the middle. So. Basically there. I wanted to be able to show how this goes. So that way, anybody that wants to try to create this for themselves can watch the video. They can slow this part down or whatever they need to do to be able to produce this for themselves. I personally, <laughs> I've never had to do that with a video for say bracelets. In fact, I don't watch bracelet videos at all, but I do have to do that when it comes to like using the image thing for like GIMP trying to new things so I totally get the the why and it's done and you know nothing wrong with that okay and again by sliding it up and keeping it closer to the clip you can keep the edges really nice and straight because to me that's it's just a nicer look. Of course, lines within the bracelet and stuff sometimes get a little bit wonky. I know that my tin can has some lines that have some kind of like a curve to it or something. And to me, I don't think that there's anything wrong with what's happening there. I think that comes from the string count was I left one out and uh, so I had to do it really really tight and um, it kind of still shows that it was handmade I kind of you don't mind a little uh, human error I guess I just try to minimize how much there is of that Okay, green is all the way out, bring this red in, and I will show you what happens with the rest of this. This is, this part's kind of neat. This is the, the kind of stuff I've used the graph paper for myself in the past. I think I actually have some where I changed the sequence for this, this kind of a stripe down the center thing. So you can probably go through the portfolio for that. I know that I have a lot of stuff to add to the portfolio and I apologize for not keeping the website up to date, but I get excited about making things and other things get neglected. It's just sort of how that goes, I guess. All right, now, so the greens are done with until the rest of this inner part of the diamond get done. So I can set those off to the side, right? So that means now the blue will come out to where the yellow is and bounce back. Try to knot itself on there. All right. Now, let's 
See, that's going to come back this way. So now those are done until the rest of this. I can do one set at a time, I guess. This purpley one comes up. Bounces back. And then the dark purple comes up and back almost instantly. Then this will come back down. So come back down. And this red will come out to meet that blue. And then the green comes down. And that's all it took to get us going in the opposite direction. Of course, I have to do it on the other side, but it's just the same thing on the other side. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully I did that to where you could tell what was happening and the whole thing made sense and you are encouraged and excited about giving that a try for yourself. And essentially what will happen is you'll have a V coming outwards now that will go all the way until it gets to the dark orange which will make the great big diamond again. And they'll just keep going back and forth, back and forth, the whole rest of this creation. Be quite honest, I really don't know how many times to expect it to do it. I think what I will do is I will take a measurement from the center of the diamond to the center of the next diamond, call that a segment, and determine how many segments I need in order to do the hairband. And that's the plan. If, by some odd chance, it doesn't land on that like a magic number, what I will do is determine how much of a remainder there would be and kind of divvy that up so that way I can kind of put the diamond that we started with into the middle and have the remainder be the equal on both sides. Not that anybody can see both sides of your head at the same time so much, like for a hairband, but my need for symmetry is so great that I kind of just want to have it done that way. So that's how I will do it. And that's why I'll have the hairband before I get too far into the project, because I will want to have those measurements taken. Um, to do it, you can't just use a ruler. You need one of those soft measuring tapes like they use for checking your waist, like you want to get new pants or something. I'm sure there's probably a proper name for that, but I have no idea what it is. It's just a way of measuring. I've got a couple of them. I even have one that looks like a little sheep. But yeah, that way, that way you can get the right exact kind of measurement because it's a curvature thing going around the hair, hair band. And uh, 
yeah, having it kind of match up will, I think, make it look cooler. And it really doesn't add any more time to the overall making your craft, so. Might as well make it good, right? There we go. And that's what we have so far. All right, I am going to continue this down. And um, I will see you when it's time to um, attach this onto the hairband itself. So, all right, catch you guys in a few. Okay. So, only took me a full day to do it, but there it is. And I am ready for the next part. So, basically at this point, we have the hairband. I have some dental floss and a needle that I'm going to use to sew on there. But I don't want these bits to be a problem, All right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this down, leave myself a bit just to glue to the back. I'm going to do that on both sides. Now mind you, I could use the this string to sew it onto here, but I'm going to use the dental floss because it's really, really thin and super, super strong. So, and I'm just going to use some of this. Now once it's all kind of sewn together it won't the glue and stuff won't matter so much but um yeah i just want to have it while i'm in the process of putting it all together and getting it right i don't want any extra little headaches like little strings getting in my way or whatever this stuff kind of dries pretty quickly so basically it's an easy way to get this done. See? A little bit more just on top. The first side there got really good, but then the, the other side wasn't so well. So there we go. All right. Got a tissue to get some of this off my fingers. And now the other side. I had some other kinds of glues that I uh, was used to use with stuff like this, really strong things that I could use like to glue leather and whatnot. But again, once this is sewn together, the strings that are, that are holding it to the band will do all the work. This is just to make that portion easier. So not a big deal. All right, get to all these little strands. I just don't want anything at the little edges. Now, normally I would want to take all of this and just bring it down and tie it in one nice big knot. All right, so you know my fingers are getting sticky and all the strings want to go to that. Um, I would want to tie it into a knot. And the reason I'm not going to do that is if you think about where that would be on the hairband itself, you could run into the risk of it rubbing onto, like, say, the back of the person that's wearing its ear, which I would imagine that to be incredibly annoying. And, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want that. So I kind of try to design things to be as comfortable as possible. So that is my hopes. So I'm going to give this a few moments to dry 
and I'll be right back with how to get it attached to this. Okay, so we get a little bit of time. Now uh, we got our needle set, toss this aside. Now, um, this is the older one. This was made shortly after my second bag and matched the second bag for the wife. So turns out this bit down here at the bottom, you don't need it to come all the way down to. So um, I basically modeled this after how I did this one because she was happy with that. So you have to you have to give them that. If they're happy with it, do that, right? Okay, so now this. What I'm going to do is right out here at the very edge where that orange kind of went across out, I'm going to take, because that's the center, right? And I marked the center of the, this uh, dental floss, right? And I'm going to go from there over top of this, try to ballpark the middle-ish, and come in this way. Whoops. It's meant to have this through here. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tie this together in a knot to at least get this whole thing started. This is probably the most difficult part of this whole thing is trying to just get this onto here. And mind you, you want to make sure you have your pattern, the pretty side, outwards. Because after this, you would have to cut this off. Alright, so got that there. And again. Not too bad. All right. Now the object is to kind of go back and forth in a in a zigzag to anchor this thing on there. And you want to kind of work close to the edge. And you want to sort of try to hide this string as much as possible. So let's see. Now, why we did it in half is because after we've done this side with this string, we'll do the other side with this other half. So that way we just eliminated the number of times that we actually have to go and thread the needle. And Well, no, we still have to thread the needle, but we don't have to like tie it onto the whole overall work. So, All right. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to not to put it right in the middle of one of my knots, like kind of going in between them. That's what you see me kind of like poking around, trying to feel for uh, the soft spot, essentially. And you can see I'm just kind of going back and forth with this now. And it is curving it in. And if you find the right spots, you can see it's the dental floss becomes basically invisible. So... And that's kind of what you want. You want it so that way, basically, people who see it have no idea how it got to be on there. Ah, just caught my little robot there. Poor little guy takes enough abuse as it is. All right. And meanwhile, as I'm kind of going along, I'm making sure that I have it squared onto here. Yeah, that's looking awesome. And the cool part is, of course, that uh, there's nothing else to this. Once it's all been sewn, it's wearable. So, if my wife wants to wear this when she goes out tomorrow, 
She can. So leave a comment if you think that this is something that uh, you would want to see carried in the shop. I would be uh, interested in knowing if this is something that, you know, you guys think that you would want to just buy as opposed to doing it for yourself. I'm also kind of curious if there's what you think about like pattern wise. Do you like this one? Do you think uh, something else? What's your thought? Me personally, I kind of really like this pattern. It was fun. It was fast. Um, I only started this thing yesterday, so that was pretty quick. Oh, I did want to mention the fact that um, despite the fact that I did a fancy pattern, this could have been a candy stripe. And you would have sewn it on the same way. Every, all, everything about it would be exactly the same. Um, except you'd have a headband with a candy stripe. So if you're a beginner and you're looking for something to do different, everything that I was talking about in regards to how to start in the middle so you can go extra long, all that stuff, all that still applies. So there's no reason you can't try this yourself. Big thing here is trying to not get the other string stuck in there and not going around the whole outside bit. Which I just did. There we go. And you don't have to worry about the string affecting how the person wears it. It's these little nubs or whatever that hold the hair straight. The strings sort of kind of go in between there. So that doesn't seem to affect anything. And as far as the, uh, it's just like the, their hair goes through this, right? This is what keeps it on. Yeah, so you don't even notice, they won't notice the string in the inside when they're wearing it. size down there. I can kind of feel because, okay, so I bought this with the intention of making it so that way its edge came right to the edge of this, right? So I can kind of feel if it gets a little pulled to one side or the other by if it starts to overhang. So that's what I was just doing there was trying to shift it because it was sort of pulling to one side, but that's an easy fix. Mind you, if your bracelet wasn't very straight, um, this might be a little bit more difficult. But just go ahead and use the uh, the blocking method that I shared before. Straighten it up, and you should be good to go. Mind you, I didn't need to do that with this, so it is what it is. That just comes from experience. So, mind you, when it comes to experience, though, so needle and thread, not really my thing. I've made so many bracelets and done so many knots, but this kind of stuff, not as much. 
But that's okay. That's how we gain experience. That's how we learn new things. I think that's uh, I think that's important. Keep the creative ideas going. Try new things. See what you can come up with. Mind you, I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is my third hairband. All have been for my wife. Uh, that's, I take that back. There might have been one more that I sold. But, um, yeah, they can be of any kind of size. These things come in ones that are a couple cm or like an inch or whatever wide. So you could make a really big wide bracelet and then you could wear that. And I'm sure that would actually be pretty awesome. Now, as you can tell, I'm not going to super crazy. Like, if you can see that on the inside, just kind of, kind of zigzagging back and forth. You don't have to stitch into every hole or do anything to, to whatever with it like that. Um, it's just not necessary. Ah, come on. The needle just fell off. I have to re-thread that. There. All right. Almost to the end now. All the way to the end. Now, just going to come back here. And knot this thing off. And of course, I'm going to do it a couple times just for overkill because I don't want it to be something where if she's out and she runs into a problem of it coming undone so call it paranoid call it whatever you want to i just like to make sure it's done right all right take the needle and do the other side all right, give me a moment. I'll be right back after having done that. All right, well, now it is all sewn on there. Not bad. Um, you can still, just because of the way it looped around, you can still kind of shift it if needed. But that's it. This is, this is complete and ready to go. So I'll uh, take a couple photos with uh, the wife to add on here. But other than that, I am done. And uh, hopefully you'll find this a challenging little project, something that you can play with. Um, I'll include the pattern for this on my website, akwall.com. And um, we can talk about maybe doing some more of these things. I'm thinking I might actually have a pretty good idea for it. So maybe... Maybe I can do that for next week or something. All right. Well, until next time, don't get your strings in a bunch.